I grew up on a dairy farm. We milked 60 Holstein cows and two older brothers. My dad's a six foot seven lumberjack and my mom was my fifth grade teacher in a town of 900 in central Wisconsin. And that's just kind of what I knew. And every Saturday morning was rock picking and every fall Saturday was firewood making and every spring we made maple syrup. And we, I just felt like at the time, that's what I knew, but looking back, um, it was just like a really beautiful way to grow up. Celebrating the four seasons, making very tangible product that's like a part of the fabric of this state. When I was in seventh grade, my dad and my mom sat us down at our table, our dining room table before we did evening chores and told us um, that we were losing the farm they would uh, sell the cows. And uh, you know, it just like still pisses me off because my oldest brother, who's um, kind of one of the reasons I feel like I'm in this work, he was relentless and he said, no, I'm not gonna go to college. I, I'll stay and make it work with y'all. And my mom said, Tony, it's not because we're not working hard enough. She never finished that sentence. Like, well, what, what is going on? So it was just like this question that really politicized me and my family. Well, what is going on when factory farms are moving in? There's one guy in a Dodge truck that's like putting crap in our, in our land, in our water. And, you know, small farms with an economic democracy all over the state can't make it. So I saw that as like a moment of this question that wasn't answered of why are hardworking folks not able to connect, not able to make it work, you know, in, in this economy. And then I came to UW-Milwaukee and played college basketball. I, I was on a team of like of 20 young, strong women, half black, half white, and just trying to like score some buckets together. And just seeing how my dad in the stands, who was unemployed and sad, but cheering on his daughter, um, wasn't, you know, had some similarities to my teammate's dad, who was unemployed, that used to have a good job, union job in Milwaukee and didn't anymore. And then on the reverse side, seeing how my families weren't the same. My family did stay in the middle class. My mom was able to get a union job as a school teacher and um, my, my teammates' parents didn't, you know? So just like the, to ask this bigger question of like why aren't hardworking folks making it and seeing the, the similarities and the solidarity and the struggle between black and white and urban and rural and then seeing the real clear barriers and oppression that this state has for communities of color. And then I got I had a great professor in college, her name's Ellen Bravo, and I was like, I got a political science degree, what am I doing with that? She was like, you gotta go work for an organization that's really moving the needle. So I interned at 9to5, which is this little scrappy organization that was fighting for paid sick days, and we got paid sick days for all Milwaukeeans on the ballot, and it was just this moment of super tangible, like people could really have a voice in their legislation that was historic in Wisconsin and we passed it by 69% of the vote. Nobody thought we could do that. Honestly, that's a sticky moment when you have a really tangible, um, amazing coalition of folks that got together for this really, like it's a labor movement, women's movement, beautiful thing. I'll always be in this movement because I see the possibility of like real tangible work that can change people's lives. But to stick in it has been has been a challenge. I think it was it's because of that like real grounding in wanting to see a family farm and my, my teammates' family really thrive in Wisconsin. That like keeps me thinking long term about like the generations of Wisconsinites that deserve to have a good job and a great family and a great life in this state because they're working hard and, and, and that's it.